the message, it's not okay what happened to you. So here you can see that there is uh, also from the society pressure for pushing through the solution, for finding out a solution, and that has the impact for the victims because the victims has the unique benefit of solving the, sol of solving the problem. And then you've got the criminals which get punished. What does it mean? It means that, for, for example, the one who harmed your dignity, you see that this person is punished, that there is the justice and that his freedom was also taken away. That you, and you don't want to see just one criminal, just the one who harmed you, but you want to also support the others. And the last one here is that you're able to speak up. You, uh, you got relief, you got confidence, so you're not scared anymore and you can really fulfill your potential because your psychological health is improved. So because of all these reasons, vote your position. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I thank the speaker for her fine speech. Just speaking time was 8 minutes 18 seconds. Uh, and now I'd like to invite the next speaker to continue the debate. The third speaker for the proposition. We think that the opposition lives in a separate reality to ours. We think that their version of the internet, their version of society, is a lot nicer than the one that we can see in, in the real world. So we are going to explain to you why they have failed to engage with our case, why they have failed to talk about what's actually relevant in this debate, and also why this, uh, this hashtag movement is actually so regretful. Okay, so I'm just going to start with some rebuttal. Okay, so from the second speaker, we heard this point about money, right? They told us how these uh, campaigns, they bring in a lot of money for different charities, right? Okay, so first of all, we think that it's very good that we sort of get money to these charities. We acknowledge that that's a good thing, right? But we also see that there's something problematic in with the way that we get money for these uh, sort of charities. So first of all, with sort of like movements like the uh, Ice Bucket Challenge, we actually see that most people didn't actually donate. Okay, most people actually dumped a bucket of ice water on their head, and that was the end of it. We do acknowledge that a lot of people did actually donate, and we're going to talk about why this effect, even if it isn't as big as they're talking about, actually isn't very helpful for these charities at all. Because for charities, they need continuous uh, they can need continuous financial support, right? In a charity, uh, you, they use money to sponsor for many different things. So in the in the in the example of ASL. Uh, they use the money to sponsor research. Research is something that takes time over many years, right? Research is complex, it takes time and money and funds. But with a movement like the Ice Packet Challenge that dies out after a year, these research can't even be finished, right? The point is that with, with trends, is that trends by definition die down, right? You can't say that something is a trend if it's something that's been liked for a hundred years, right? A trend is something that happens for a very short time, gets a lot of interest, and after that interest peaks, it goes down, right? And that is the issue, right? So we see that these charities, well, they get a lot of, they, but they don't actually get as much money as the opposition is talking about. But even if they did, that money stops after a time. Like, they don't get, like, continuous patrons, right? They get a lot of people who get very interested for a very long time, and then they forget about it. It's even to the point, if you ask someone about the Ice Packet Challenge today, they will likely say, oh, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> like, that's the sort of reaction you get. It's not like, oh, I've been sponsoring them for years now. I'm very passionate about this, okay? I so to move on to so the next rebuttal point, okay. So we also got some... Uh, they talked about how, like, um, 
So uh, that men are also coming out and they're admitting that they have been like, you know, that they have sexually assaulted people. Because first of all, we don't think that this impact on their side is like that big. We think that most people who are like very like sexist and horrible people wouldn't come out, right? And the sort of people that would actually come out by their sexual appearances, as they define, are the people that did it maybe 30 years ago. They feel really bad about this. They take this opportunity to come out and say, I did a bad thing, right? We think that that would still happen even if there wasn't like a hashtag campaign. And even if it didn't happen, we still think that they would regret it because we don't think that people's like morality and morality and their like feelings about what their actions really change through like a, a, a hashtag campaign, right? So like they also say that this has led to discourse, right? But like as we explained, the sort of discourse that we are seeing here is barely polarized, okay? We don't see people going around talking about like, oh, what can we do to sort of stop like sexual harassment? Is, well, is, do you have any like good ideas on how we can make it better for women in society? What we see is people getting angry, right? They're saying these pigs, they touched me, and that sort of thing, okay? And while we think that that might be just, like, I think that may be right that people are having this sort of reaction. It is not like uh, it's not a constructive, right? It doesn't actually lead to change. What it leads to is that the people who are on the other side of this sort of movement, right? They also get angry and they're like, "You feminist pigs!" Okay, and that is not something constructive. Like that's just people using a hashtag as a flag to stand behind. Using this, this is like a sense of team mentality. I stand behind Black Lives Matter. You stand between All Lives Matter. I hate you. And that is not the kind of like climate that we want today. That is what's led to like populism. That's what led to like Trump getting into power. Like we don't actually think that what they're talking about is actually existing. We don't think that constructive discourse is existing. The kind of media landscape that they're talking about doesn't exist. What exists is polarized angry people who like say that the other side is just like worth nothing okay before you continue sure madam but this will happen under any side of the house we tell you that these are people why are you not engaging with our analysis we've told you that that, that because of these like simplified messages that you acknowledge on your side of the house it's because of these simplified messages that we don't engage in discourse right when you stand behind a flag when you're not saying uh, the hashtag isn't what kind of lives matter, what can we do about police brutality, the hashtag is black lives matter. And if people don't agree with this, they're going to say all lives matter. And we, we like even like just look at these two hashtags, black lives matter, all lives matter. The reason why we have black lives matter is because people are upset about p police brutality against black people in the United States, okay? And all lives matter isn't even relevant. It doesn't make sense, right? They're not a part of the issue. So why do they create that hashtag? Because they don't understand it, right? And it is just the lack of understanding that creates these sort of like polarized landscapes, right? So I'm going to move on. They also talked a lot about the victims, right? They talk about like the more support they get when coming out. Okay, so first of all, you think that people can get like support on our side, of, like without like uh, hashtag campaigns too. You think that you know support exists. The support exists in the form in the form of like support groups. You have like friends. We have. Uh, we have uh, like therapy for these people. We have like uh, they can come out to their families, right? They can they can come up on Facebook if they want to, right? But what we have on our side, on the comparative, is that when these people come out after these hashtag uh, campaigns, they do so in a polarized climate where people, uh, where a lot of people hate the people who stand behind the, uh, the with, behind feminism, right? And we, they, these people then, when they come out, like on the comparative, they get a lot of backlash that they wouldn't get because if we didn't have these sort of uh, like hashtag campaigns. So, like you have to engage with this, right? And also, they're talking about the punishment point, right? And that is also directly clashes with one of our points, right? They talk about how these people, when they come out, they can get punishment for the people that have done this, uh, have done these like sort of um, sexual harassment towards them, right? And we, t we tell you that this sort of punishment, we don't stand behind it on our side of the house. We believe that all people are innocent until proven guilty, right? We believe that all people, they, forget, they, they deserve to go through a fair trial, right? We believe that even if you have committed rape, you also go through, defer to go through a um, a trial, and if we say that because of these hashtag campaigns, we don't get that right. Like we get someone who says, X person did this to me, and then we get backlash, right? We get a lot of people who get angry. We get people coming to their house, vandalizing their car, following their children as they go to school, harassment, bullying. Like we don't think that these are very, uh, like we don't think that this is fair. So even if you're talking about like maybe the victim that feels good about seeing this person having their life torn apart, but we also say that that is not like how we do justice in the world, right? We say we say that that is not the kind of justice where we want to see in the world. We want people to uh, be able to go to the police, talk about their experience, have this person go through a trial, be able to witness and tell their side of the story, and then if they are seen as guilty of this, we think that they should uh, get the like a punishment for that, like they should go to jail. Before the time runs out. Yes. Madam, why would these women want to create fake accounts? Well, I'm not saying that they're creating fake accounts. I'm saying this could be real. I can say that, okay, if I say that this person is.
has raped me, and that is true. I, okay, I think, first of all, I should be going to the police and saying this, and then I should be talking to my friends, then I should go for a therapy, right? I'm saying that I shouldn't go out on Facebook saying that this ex person has done this, and then get like the whole world to tear this person's life apart. Whether this is true or not, it's not really relevant, right? But okay, it is relevant because, of course, some innocent people are going to get punished. Like, we can't really, uh, like, even if this is like only one person, we still think this is really horrible and that there's a possibility of this happening. But even if we say that most of these people are actually guilty, we still think that they should deserve to go through trials. Like, if I, if I murder someone here, it's not right for anyone in this room to kill me. Like, I mean, that's just like not how democratic societies work, right? And because of that, we think it's wrong. And, like, also, they haven't really engaged with our point about, like, the sense of help, right? Okay, so basically what we've been talking about here is that people don't actually do that much. Like, we talked about how, like, the Coney Fay campaign, they say the, the FBI actually catch Coney, okay? The thing is, right, we have no way of proving that this was because of the hashtag campaign, but we what we can prove is that the charity that stood to, like, said, got a lot of money because of the Coney campaign was a fraud. This was a fraud, and they got money. We think that is wrong. So thank you very much, and we really regret the, all this. I thank the speaker for her fine speech. The speaking time was 8 minutes 21 seconds. I would now like to invite the third speaker to continue for side opposition. What side of proportion have to prove in this debate is why an impact of political discourse is so important and so intense that it overlays all of the analysis and harms this brings on the victims of the morality of society and of the solved problem of these problems that we're facing now. But they never did. And, and now, now it's too late. All they kept saying was political discourse, political discourse, people will be shut out of that. Never really like trained if this harms democracy, if this harms the people themselves, if this has a personal impact on them. Not strong enough. Ladies and gentlemen, what they have to prove in order to win this debate was that they regret the rise of the hashtag. Meaning that the world would be better, the ideas would be solved better, there wouldn't be a negative impact if such hashtag movements weren't in. And we told you that they never really did that, right? They just saw that there are positive outcomes and there are negative outcomes. We told you that this is not enough for the proposition to win the whole debate. On the other hand, side of the hand, we showed you that the negative impacts are there or that they are so minimal that they will never outweigh what we presented in our, in, in our material. We told you, we told you the first point in this debate was a plur pluralized discussion, discourse, right? And we said that they said that people will stay in their vote. We told you that they are clearly not. People who were rapists in any past, people who did not understand that they raped women, came to the conclusion that actually it was a bad idea just because that hashtag, just because they could read a thousand of, a thousand of women about their own feelings about such a case. We told you that this is so much more important and strong than just trying an article in Guardian, right? We told you that these emotions are so crucial in this case because the emotions are what appeals to people, okay. right? Not facts. We tell you that the simplification of the issue itself are important. Yes. Like, if you're saying that this has a positive effect, then you need to sort of tell us how people are getting raped less because of this. Like, you can't just say... Not really. So that we don't have to, like, to tell you that there, there will be less fight right because that these people are simply free. So that the simple idea of people realizing that there is a problem in our society, that the society is wrecked and twisted in some way, is enough. To show you that these people are supported nowadays, that this, this kind of problem is shown, that we show the problem with the po policy itself, is enough to win this kind of case. But we told you there are even better examples of how these problems are, 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 are uh, solved. And we think that in the second part of this argument, they like really messed up hate speech and legitimate opinions, right? We feel that they even shifted when in their first speech it was more uh, first speech was about hate speech, second speech was more about legitimate opinions, third speech against only hate speech. We feel that we uh, clash both of these. First, legitimate speech. We feel that in this case, legitimate arguments and discussion is there even nowadays. We told you that they are opposed hashtags for this movement, that there is a legitimate discussion in the media about it, that the experts itself are talking about it. This is enough. Secondly, hate speech. We feel that this is true legitimate to like completely ban these people out. We told you that these people are harm to the society, these people are the, are the ones who cause the problem. It is completely okay to show, uh, uh, to show, uh, to do not help them really have the discourse. 
that we talked about that, uh, then, oh, no. but, but no, thank you. But even if, the, if this was prohibitive, they never really showed you impact. Whereas what I will learn from my previous speakers is that they outweigh these benefits, right? So at the end of the day, even if this stands, they can, uh, they can still win. So about to the second point versus phrasing awareness versus slacktivism, and versus if the idea is really solved or not. And we did it in this case, they said that we have alternatives, right? You can go to the police, you can go to your own friends. This is not enough. Firstly, these people are scared right now because they think, because without these hashtags, society wouldn't, and these victims would not even realize that what is happening to them is not normal and it's not okay. Women were scared to speak up before the hashtag movement because they thought that the society thinks that it's okay to rape them. The society, these people won't be even able to come to police because police is one of the problems that causes this problem. We tell you that in this case, these people, what they gain from the impact is that they gain a sense of belonging with the society. They gain the sense of that this is not okay, this is a moral problem, this is what we should take apart, this is what we should solve. Because that in this case, this is very important. Only by spreading this to your family, a lot of people still wouldn't know what the, what the ice bucket challenge is, what the disease is. Still, a lot of people would not know without such a popularized hashtag. We think that this is very important. Later, you must be told you how this really solves the idea. We think that media and celebrities is a very big impact and we do think that it is good that even a simplified message proves out because we tell you that we, you don't fully really think to have any kind of backup info, any kind of like a very important info because these mostly are issues that are emotional. This is mostly our issues, you don't really need to be an expert on such a field. This is our problems that impacts on, on, on very simplified parts of the lives of their people. This is what is important. You don't have to be an expert to understand that raping women is right, ladies and gentlemen. So what, what, what happens, and if this really leads to slacktivism or the activism itself? Coney 2012. We tell you that in this case, everyone was started to solve the case after there were a massive protest which were enabled because of the hashtag. Because people finally realized that, they, that there is a dictator in uh, that there is a dictator and that he's having a child army, right? The only thing why this why this was solved and why they're still hinged upon him is because the hashtag itself. It's because that people protested and the governments finally realized that they have to do something in that in order to gain trust from their people, right? This is the kind of impact that we are talking. This is about the society itself is pointing out to the problem and the society itself is trying to solve it. Secondly, they know that ice bucket challenge is not a real, uh, it's not a real because we're not gaining money anymore, right? Ladies and gentlemen, we find cure to that disease only because this whole uprising, right? We now can cure, we were at the last stage of finding a cure to it, right? We're almost there and this would never happen if we were only talking to our friends, right? Show us a movement which was not enabled without the social media, without the hashtag. They never did so. The most important hashtags in the 21st century are because of the hashtag. Because social media is right now what turns up our society. We don't neglect the fact that it probably wasn't through hashtags like in history, but it was probably through some other media or, or some, some other utility that in this case society was more like torn, torn together, right? But spreading through the terms that in the 21st century, media is what turns people. Many as what activizes people, we think you this is good. This is why hashtag movements works nowadays and nothing else can. This is why we don't regret the rise of that. We tell you that these inform people all around the world about an issue, something that they can't achieve on their side of the house by only telling it okay. to your friends and families. No, thank you. We thank you. Uh, we think that not only this solves the issue, but even if we are, we get their point about short-term impact really developed in their third speech, we still got some other like very very important benefits which we do which we want to never gain without the rise of all hashtag movements. And this is, for example, bringing the communities together. This is, for example, really understanding the whole point of the problem, really embracing that there is a problem, really showing these victims that we stand behind them, showing the victim that it's not okay what happened to them and that we have some kind of sentiment towards them, right? Something that can maybe happen from your friends and family, but never from the whole world. Because in this case, we showed you that this will bring communities together, that this itself that incentivizes bigger stakeholders in this debate, companies, states, governments, FBI, whatsoever, to take action because people are discontent with it. This is something that can't really happen in their small actions until they've showed you that through families and friends you can have such a big like release and, and solution to the problem. They can't win this case either. So that in this case, we showed you how this is very harmful to the victim because if this is something that is intimate to them. This is something that turned their life upside down. Like rape is a very crucial idea. The fact that they that they killed your brother is a very is a very idea. We're not talking about things like they stole my credit card, right? This is like an immense important things which turn your life upside down and which are shaping the way of how we view society and how we act. 
this is very important, this is why, why our arguments still stand. At the end of the day, unless they, sh uh, even if they showed you any part of their, of their argument itself, they can't win the debate. Thank you. I thank the speaker for her fine speech. The speaking time was 8 minutes and 5 seconds. I would now like to invite the reply speakers to conclude this debate. The first is the reply speaker for the opposition. Okay. On Team Check Red, we have to prove two things in today's debate. First of all, that we bring benefits to society through awareness, and second of all, benefits to victims. I will, I will construct my reply accordingly for two clutches, society and victims. Firstly, to society. The first point we see here is side, op side propositions in today's debate comes up and tell us there's an oversimplification of the issue. They tell us that what we're doing is we're giving far too short, you know, passwords and that's, uh, or passwords or, you know, banners and therefore that's bad because we don't get the whole entire message. But the issue here on side of proposition is they're not debating the debate we're supposed to. They're debating about the idea of hashtags, the initial step, but actually neglect our analysis on what actually happens after, what hashtags enable, right? The rise of media, as I will tell you, right? What we told you here is the exclusivity of these hashtags. We told you, first of all, they're catching They convey the message in a way in which people can understand simply. We told you that on the contrary, what side of proposition is standing for and the only other alternative they bring are articles or, 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 or some other media platforms are redundant or just don't work. Why do they not do, why they do, why do they not work, do not work? Because first of all, they had no association with the people. And second of all, we told you that they're just far too complex and are just neutral. Don't give the emotional value why people really read media. Second of all, they absolutely neglected what happens after. What we told you here is because, the, just because it becomes trending, media catch on, people catch on, and therefore we have some sort of, you know, people coming together, as we'll talk about later. We got no reaction to this whatsoever, except for it's too simple, right? Which is absolutely not enough. They have to take us on our highest ground. Second of all, they brought up a point on hate speech and polarization, how by standing up, women will be abhorred because apparently they say rape is bad and they can't really say that in public. We told you several things here. First of all, why would these victims, or, or, or sorry, what they also told us is that we will have fake news or in a certain way people will make up stories. First of all, they never showed us an incentive of why these people would want to do this. What benefit will they bring, right? Therefore, this analysis didn't really hold any sustenance. What's more, we compare this to two ideas. First of all, the support victims gain from this, right? We told you that they need an emotional, that they need an emotional bond with the rest of society in order to prevail through this issue. We never really got a reaction to this. They told us that they will be abhorred, but they never told us why this will be more significant. Whereas Elena and uh, and Catherine in their speech showed you how it is an integral component of the whole endeavor. Second of all. What we told you here is that society is now capable of pointing out the people who would be hating, right? We're capable of showing this person right here should not do it. We told you that it will, that it will actually prevent more people from hating, right? Because they will be doing this on a platform of social media that is deeply interconnected and therefore our friends, people we care about, people who, will, who, we, want them, who, 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 who we want to have a good perception of us will know that we hit against them, right? And finally, we told you that these are people who inherently will do this on their both sides of the house who are in their essence and are innately, um, radi or innately radical or racist. Finally, we gave you a point on awareness where we told you in, in all our speeches the example of how the Kony campaign helped, uh, helped, helped the child army in Uganda, right? Something we never really got a reaction to. What we would need here is a comparative on how, you know, exactly an example brought negative impacts. We didn't really get anything tangible. Second clash, quickly to victims. We brought you an idea of moral support, right? How they really need it here. What they told you here is yet again, they just, they all essentially what they said is that, you know, they'll be abhorred, but we really needed a comparative here, something they did not give, and therefore this point still falls on our side. Second of all, we had a clash on money, how we really help out the victims, right? What we told you here is the example of the Ice Bucket Challenge, where we have, where we had trial tests for ALS, right, because of the donations, right? And just on a comparative level, we see that at least, e even if we take it on the highest ground, we at least give some money to, to the society or to the NGO, whereas they give no money. For all these reasons, please vote check right. Okay, 
CI Tiger Speaker of East Fine Speech, the speaking time was 4 minutes and 6 seconds, and I would like to invite the reply speaker for the proposition to conclude the debate. Thank you very much. complex issues and actually looking at the nuances of it and seeing what other opinions can be on the other side and actually understanding the like limitations of your own side, right? We think this is very unlike hashtags where you just post a snappy, mes uh, snappy message, people read it, people either agree or they disagree and that's like the end of the debate, right? It's not good enough for opposition to say hashtags generate awareness and people will necessarily support good causes. We see this is not the case. We think things like the Trump campaign were clearly fed into by things like hashtag campaigns, right? People like posting it. They didn't engage with the analysis that my first speaker provided about like how governments can use this to further campaigns because like numbers are important. If you think like this campaign is supported by like loads of people, that's something that influences your psychology. These are things that they just did not engage with. They never proved that activism is greater than before hashtags became a thing, right? Even though we on proposition told you how activism has existed even more previously and how like uh, and, and they haven't engaged with this, right? We told you that the hashtags actually pro promote a form of slacktivism, right? They had no response to like analysis of how this pressures people to share their experiences even when that's not something they want to do. They strawman us in reply by saying that we said the victims make fake accounts which is something we never claimed and also they brought us new material in their third speech. Um, lastly they haven't almost found a cure for ASL, they've used um, incorrect facts so like so they, and we also pointed out how like actually today like you receive a lot less funding and how that's really damaging to a company that actually has to function of funds that they get for the wrong amount of time. So some points in this debate. First of all, this thing about like oversimplification. Now they say this is a good thing and it generates awareness. We don't really get like why this awareness is inherently good, especially if people just like pick a side and then become very persuaded by that side. We told you first of all that these are very complex issues and it's like not simple. It's not as simple as this happened or it didn't happen, right? There's actually nuances. There's actually feelings involved. There's actually experience that have to be talked about and can't be talked about in a simple tweet, right? We also say that secondly, these hashtags have often been misunderstood, such as we saw in the Black Lives Matter movement, when you see like all kinds of people then coming up with um, all lives matter because they fundamentally don't get the message that a short tweet is trying to convey. They have not engaged with this, right? We talked about how this like uniquely harms victims, right? First of all, we had this analysis on how this pressures in, uh, people into talking about experiences that they're not comfortable with talking about. We think this is a huge harm because it has a coercive effect on individuals who don't want to be viewed as cowards for not talking about their experience, even though that's something immensely private. Secondly, we talked about how victims are often targeted because uh, because lots of people actually hate things like the Me Too campaign and can specifically target those people because they posted a hashtag about it, right? We told you about how like families and like homes have been targeted by people who really hate the campaigns. We say this also goes in the other direction, right? My third speaker talked about like justice, how people like get really angry at like someone who's seen to be a perpetrator, and how we forget things like innocent until proven guilty, how we like circumvent court cases and actual like trials, and instead have people like punished before they've been proven guilty in the first place, right? We have this point about polarization, and the only real response to this is that people understand issues and polarization doesn't happen. But this is just like clearly not true, right? We see a rise in like Trump supporters, right? We see a rise in men right, men's rights activism. And the narrative that like both of these and many others are specifically uh, specifically driving is that they're shouted down and ignored in the status quo, that on social media they are ignored, right? Hashtags promote this because of the simple messages, right? Because you can just shout someone down and say they're an idiot, rather than actually engaging with what they're saying, actually telling them why they're wrong and like why they need to view it another way. We gave the, the unique benefits of engagement, but clearly that's something, engagement is clearly something opposition just like does not value, right? We say that people feel more respected and like can view other legit, uh, opinions as legitimate when they're actually engaged with and actually like have their like opinions engaged with and can actually also like feel like their own opinions are listened to, right? We say that the Trump campaign was driven by this kind of discourse that you have on Twitter. They have not dealt with the status quo, right? So lastly, like the actual generation of action, right? We say that people are lulled into feeling like they ha um, help, like they don't have to do more. We say that no one ever like pointed out that Coney was a fraud. And we think that it's really embarrassing when the girls in Nigeria were found and the Bring Back Our Girls campaign was already dead at that point. Please read I'm so proud to be both.
speaker from Irvine's speech, taking time about four minutes, seven seconds. I thank all the debaters for this debate, for this fine debate. You may now shake your hands. We'll ask you to leave the room for uh, three minutes because we need to reach a decision as soon as possible. Then we will call you to me and we will announce the decision here. And please leave the room as soon as possible. We are starting the schedule. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. So, feeling developed and. Uh,